The mainstream media is coming after Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s health in a new article for the New York Times. The paper details a health issue from 12 years ago where doctors apparently found a dead parasitic worm inside his brain. The article proceeds to pour through a laundry list of other health issues like mercury poisoning and atrial fibri fib <laughs> fibrillation, seemingly questioning his health and ability to serve as president. The Times says, quote, the 70-year-old Mr. Kennedy has portrayed his athleticism and relative views as an advantage over the two oldest people to ever seek the White House, President Biden, 81, former President Donald Trump, 77. Then goes on to say, quote, still over the years, he has faced serious health issues, some previously undisclosed, including the apparent parasite. So a lot of discourse about this article appearing on social media. Um, look, I think he's running for president and it is fair to ask about his health. So these are disclosures that came from his divorce proceedings 10 years ago, where he tried to argue that these medical issues at the time had, uh, had reduced his earnings potential because they were affecting him cognitively. And so he was trying to, I think, get out of paying less in the divorce. So given that that's all occurred, I think it's like totally fine to call attention to this. Um, however, I couldn't like avoid, the, I think the framing is very much, you know, you have, you have concerns about Biden's age or Trump's age and health issues. Well, look at RFK Jr. He's got all these problems too. I mean, it, it is true that despite being significantly younger than Biden and quite obviously in much better physical shape than Biden, none of these candidates are spring chickens and they all have to contend with some difficulties in their medical past. Now, Joe Biden, if we're talking about health issues, his age has really overshadowed pretty much any discussion of anything else. But remember, he also had uh, brain surgery for an aneurysm back in the 80s. You know, when you've lived a long time, you've been yeah. in the public eye a long time, you do have to contend with people's concerns about your ability to serve. Now, in the RFK Jr. instance, having actively argued that your own cognitive ability is diminished is a little bit of a tough look. This isn't someone from the outside saying, you had a heart attack, you had a brain surgery, you had an injury, but you've represented yourself as being fit for the job. I understand that it's contextual. Right. It was in the context of a divorce proceeding. He, you know, was trying to avoid uh, you know, paying a sum of money. And the, and the doctors, you know, quoted in this article say that that is something you can, you know, this is, this was what, 12 or 15 years right. ago. This is something you can recover from and, and, and not have lasting brain or health issues from. Uh, of sure, course, they absolutely. have not diagnosed him and they don't absolutely. know exactly what his case is. And look, I don't think it's going to matter because people who are interested in RFK Jr. have been watching him give speeches and give interviews and following him and like what they see now. And even if that's a diminished capacity yeah. version of him, it is preferable to many Americans to what they're seeing from Joe Biden now to the extent that Joe Biden even makes himself available to the public. RFK Jr. does three-hour podcast interviews. He does podcasts all day. He's been on with us for long, extended periods of times. Many other uh, people, their, their shows, he makes himself very available. He talks a lot, <laughs> over, you know, on and on and on. Um, it, it, there's no comparison to uh, how guarded Joe Biden has become with the media, very seldomly doing interviews. Um, I don't know if you saw the other day, there was a clip of this, of uh, Jen Psaki on The View, saying that, uh, you know, being asked about, um, you know, what his media strategy is, why he doesn't do more interviews. And she said, well, he should do more interviews. She said he should do fewer press conferences and more interviews on places like The View. Like, well, that mm -hmm. would just be friendly, you know, uh, fluff. He, he doesn't want to do uh, the, the press conferences because he does actually get hostile questions and he has to react on the fly. And sometimes he starts telling anecdotes about people who are long dead or not, you know, when he was asked about if there's a ceasefire, not knowing who is being negotiated, what with who, all that sort of thing. <laughs> so I, there, there really is wrong. no yeah. comparison. I, I think the question people have is whether it's just, whether it is for Biden, it's, it's all up there. He's just communicating it um, poorly. Yeah, that that is the question. And I, you know, I have seen, I have heard commentators that are frankly sympathetic to Joe Biden have very mixed feelings about how much press he can do. He's in a he's in a different but similar situation as uh, Donald Trump. Donald Trump's argument for not doing uh, a lot of press or only doing friendly press is that when you're already up, you have nothing to lose. Uh, by exposing yourself more. Uh, and there's an argument that a lot of liberals have um, bought into, which is that Donald Trump is succeeding in, in part because he's not as present as he was in the 2016 cycle. And many people have forgotten why they hate him and are being reminded repeatedly because of social media and images coming out of Gaza and the like as to why they don't like Joe Biden. On uh, Joe Biden's side, it really does seem like, you know, 
uh, maybe he could improve, you know, if, if you thought he could improve his lot coming up from behind by doing interviews, then yeah, you should do him. Obviously, I think people who are rooting for him wish he would do more uh, interviews with the caveat that they wish he would do them well. And when you don't have the confidence that he's going to be able to execute them well, well then there, that's how you get this kind of middling, confused messaging. Like, yeah, maybe he's doing enough. Maybe he should just do friendly ones. Maybe he should just go on The View. I got to say, Robbie, I'm not entirely confident that he would perform very well on, on The, the view. view. No. Especially now, we, as we covered, what was it, uh, last week or earlier this week, that uh, said at least Sonny Hostin and uh, Whoopi Goldberg have been pretty critical of his, uh, of his policy. Strategy. In, exactly. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, some of these, you know, just to go over the details of um, what they're describing about RFK, jail, RFK Jr.'s health issues, um, the, the mercury, uh, high levels of mercury for eating too many tuna fish sandwiches, that was his favorite food for a long mm -hmm. period of time. Got to watch out for that. Wait, that is related to the brain worms? Or no, no, separate? that's a totally separate issue. Okay. Mercury. He had too much, uh, too high that's mercury a real, That's levels. a real issue. And yeah. ironic for someone who, as an environmental lawyer, has been working so hard to... Right. Clean up our there are some clean. ironies here that are not that don't in, indict him. I mean, <laughs> another big irony being if you have a parasitic worm infection, you know how you treat that, right? Ivermectin. Oh, <laughs> that is literally what ivermectin is for. <laughs> Maybe that's why there's certain sympathies to this. <laughs> I know that's what I'm wondering. That's what I'm wondering. All right, we will have more rising right after this.